while I find myself needing to weigh in on something again, because maybe it's, I've been thinking about it for a long time, and so I have a few things I could say about it. But for those of you who are unaware of this, uh, within the various lineages of Hazrat Nayak Khan, uh, the various tariqas of the universal Sufi orders that he established back in the early 20th century, there has emerged a wide-ranging discussion about the use of various terms uh, in the prayers that Hazrat Nayak Khan transmitted. I'm using my notes here again so that I don't go overboard with my comments. Now, in particular, the use of the term master, which occurs in the invocation, and is the most commonly used prayer in all of the tarikas. So if you're not familiar with this, which I'm assuming many of you will not be, uh, the invocation goes toward the one, the perfection of love, harmony and beauty, the only being, united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment of the master, the spirit of guidance. Now for those of you, again, who are not familiar with this invocation, it was given by a Nayak Khan in English, so there's no issue with translation. He did use the word master. Now, of course, for many now um, in English, particularly in America, the term master has come to be associated with the most cruel of human practices and institutions, such as colonialism and slavery. And for many English speakers, the term also seems to be too heavily gendered and smacks of coerced socioeconomic, political, and perhaps even emotional and personal inequality. Now, given the context in which Murshid and Ayat Khan transmitted this prayer, it is clear he didn't intend any of those other connotations. He knew the audience to whom he was speaking, which was a largely white European audience, uh, many of them Anglicans, um, with occasional Americans and Quakers and others in the mix. India was still a subject country under British occupation during the time of Murshid's life and work in the world. And for me, it has always been possible that there might have been a little bit of irony in his choice of terms, reminding his privileged audience that there was, in fact, a spiritual master that was above even them, to whom they might consider submitting or opening themselves up to. At the very least, we cannot assume that Anayat Khan was naive about any of the implications in this word, considering how thoughtful he was about pretty much everything else. Now, according to Pirzia, who is the one of the grandchildren of Anayat Khan and is the leader of the Inayati slash Sufi order, uh, Anayat Khan was in fact asked at one time by a murid what he meant by using this term master. And his response was that master could be a messenger or could be a rasul. Now, keeping in mind that the term message, message or messenger, if you use the term messenger, uh, that is actually an English translation of the Greek term anglos or angel, and that rasul is a title in which in Arabic means the warner, and it is something that is only applied to like the great prophets uh, in, in Islam and then in universal Sufism to the great prophets of other traditions. The term master would seem, in fact, to have any, many possible connotations. So it's not just simply messenger. When I was taught the invocation, I was taught that the term master indicated a soul or a person who had achieved mastery in the sense of mastery over oneself on the path of spiritual service. In many ways, this discussion reminds me of the differences between the original Hebrew and the English translation of the passages of the second creation story in Genesis, where God, at least in English translations, is said to command humans to subdue and conquer the world or subdue and rule over the world, depending on the rendition. When I was learning Hebrew, my Hebrew teacher explained that the verbs used in these contexts could and probably should, given the use of the words and how they're used in other biblical contexts, be understood to mean something like, quote, walking upon the earth as an equal to other beings, or, quote, achieving mastery as in mastering the violin, unquote. And rather than ruling, humans should understand, quote, how they are the head of all living things and thus responsible for all others, unquote. In other words, we're kind of where the buck stops. 
since those are the fullest whole meanings of the terms being used in Hebrew. For me, I always have to keep in mind the following, and I always come back to this. Once we know the context of the words used in transmission, are we really free to simply dismiss Mershid's words because they might make us uncomfortable now? Now, I have no problem with this discussion, don't get me wrong. It is a vital and important one, one made even more urgent by the persistent issues of social and political inequality and discord and even violence that we see all around us every day. For me, being a master of something implies that one has made an effort, taken responsibility, achieved something which can then share, be shared with others, or in the sense of a spiritual path, that one has opened oneself up to the divine enough that it can reveal itself to others through that mastered one. For me, messenger or message seems too passive to me. It doesn't demand automatically a response from the receiver, and the divine word can just pass through without effect or effort, really. One tends to listen to a master if they're really masterful, but maybe not a message. Now this gets into another area that I'll probably talk about in a different video, the distinction that Inayat Khan makes between the necessity for democracy in the physical world, but the co-necessity for hierarchy in the spiritual world, that one should not confuse levels. There are some who are more developed, experienced, and masterful in matters of the spirit. It's not unlike the ongoing issue that we're dealing with in our own society, where everyone thinks they're an expert on everything because they can get on the internet and look up something on Wikipedia or YouTube. For me, you can also kind of see this working when the invocation that was given in English is then translated into other languages. In many other languages, a master is translated into the equivalent, say in German or in, in French, into the word maestro, uh, which obviously means someone who is an expert at something, someone who is um, well-seasoned, someone who can play the violin really well, right? Now, there have been many suggestions, and people are experimenting with lots of options. Pierzia has taken to using the messenger instead of the master based on Anayat Khan's answer, which I talked about above. That's fine and nice, since one can then directly point to something that Murshid said to a student if one needs a justification for the change. Others are adding phrases, so instead of saying the master, they are saying the message, the mother, the miracle or they are omitting master altogether and simply saying the embodiment of the spirit of guidance, since spirit of guidance is obviously a description of what master is supposed to be. Now my difficulty with adding too many words or phrases um, is that they may overspecify what Murshid was trying to say. For example, while the, while the word mother might seem to some to counter the gender issues of master, although women of any stripe can certainly achieve mastery, especially spiritual mastery, that term may not be comfortable for people for whom mother is not meaningful or has really negative connotations. For those of us who are not mothers, like myself, or have had really bad mothers, like a whole bunch of people I know, placing this term here is not necessarily helpful. Miracle doesn't make any sense to me at all in this place either because the definition of it is too nebulous. I mean, what would count, you know? It also sounds too religious to some people, which I've heard some people say. And frankly, to me, adding all these extra terms is just too many words. The genius of the invocation is that it's short, it's easy to remember, and can be used as a prayer, an invocation, a blessing, or as darud, or a zikr. I'm still, however, intrigued by the term master in the sense of mastery. For one, the term reappears in some of his other prayers, and there seems to be less attention to those instances, even though his intentional context seems to be the same. And as I said, I am concerned with preserving the actual transmission of Piro Murshid Hazrat Nayak Khan, even as we experiment and discuss and come to terms with our history as embodied and often troubled spiritual beings on the earthly plane. So I teach my murids the original words, and then I tell them about the discussion. My own contribution is to say the embodiment of mastery, the spirit of guidance. Same number of syllables, but it is more active. It preserves what I think is the context of what Murshid intended and is immediately gender neutral.
But of course, I remain open to this discussion. But that's my take on this right at the moment.